So, today we step forward a little further into analyzing the graphs a little bit more. Now, some of this stuff are some things that we've done before in one way or another, and some of it is stuff we've just been doing. But the one thing I want you to notice right away is that that last sentence up above, we are going to zap this for right now. I'm not going to concern us with increasing and decreasing quite yet, just because we got enough other stuff going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the graphing calculator help us a bit graphing this, figuring out our x-intercepts, our zeros, and then these things called maxes and mins. So again, that's going to get saved for another time. So what we've been doing so far is we've either been taking the zeros to create a polynomial, which we're going to revisit here a little, in a little bit, but we haven't done quite as much with the graph aspect of it, of, of trying to get that part situated. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little review here first of how to find or how to trap values. And we've done this before in here, but since it's been a little while, I thought it'd be kind of important to make notes. So we're going to use this little space up here to the right to get some of this info in here. So Hardy likes to call this trapping because what we're legitimately going to do here is we're going to take either a min, a max, or a zero, and we're going to trap it in to find the value. So basically, this seems to be consistent with me, <laughs> three steps. First step get as close as you can with the left and right arrows. Okay, so what I mean by that is once we get this in and we start moving, I'm going to move the little cursor guy, but I'm only going to use the right and left arrows. If I start pushing up and down, it kind of, the calculator forgets what I'm trying to do. So we're going to kind of stress that we're going to use these, but we'll, we'll get more info on that here in a second when we actually get one up. Okay. Once we get as close as we can, bless you, we're going to arrow left four times and hit enter. Why four? Because I want to make sure when I'm trapping that if I'm off a little bit in step one, that it's not going to mess me up. So we'll get there, arrow left, and then hit enter. And then finally, our three, and I'll zoom a little more here if I need to for some of you. We're going to arrow right eight times and hit enter twice. You're like, okay, the four was weird enough. Why are we doing it, you know, twice as much? Because we're going to do it four times to get back to the start. Bless you. And then four more times to actually get it. And what we're doing is we're going to set up boundaries. We're going to set up this, this trap, and then we're going to get an answer. Once we start doing it, and we're going to do it a lot in each of these problems, it'll start to become a little more second nature of what we're up to. But those will be the same three things that we're doing whenever we're looking for, can I squeeze this in still? X-intercepts, max, and min. Same exact thing every single time. So you're like, okay, let's, let's, let's get down to business here and see how this is going to go. Okay. So bust out my calculator. And again, if you haven't grabbed one yet, probably a good idea. Before we even start, okay, my other classes are doing something a little different, so they may have messed with your windows and not put them back like I told them to. So, first thing I want you to do if you're using one of the calculators in here, see, here we go already, is to go to the window. And typically what it's supposed to look like is the X, min, and max are supposed to be negative 10 and 10. Okay, that one's good. Scale should be 1. Y, min, and max should be the same. So this is what your window should look like at the beginning. And this is also what your window should look like when you leave class. After you put your calculator back. Well, before you put your calculator back in the, in the case. So once I have that, okay, negative 10 for my mins, 
10 for my maxes, and again, I just hit window to get there. That should be normal. Should. I actually am going to have you check one other thing, too, just to be sure. Once you have that set, we're going to hit second window. So second window. This is what your table setup should look like. Okay, it starts at zero and it counts by ones. I know one of my groups yesterday was counting by 25s for one of the problems that we were doing, so they may have changed that to 25. I'm going to make sure that's not the case. So second table to get zero and one. And then my window should look like this. Okay, once we're there, we're going to type our expression in. And again, my exponent button, if I move this up a little bit, will get me my three. Notice my cursor is still up in the exponent. I don't want it up there still. So I'll right arrow to get it back down. And we'll get that set. And once we have that, okay, well, let's, let's take a look and kind of see what this looks like. Now, what's important to me when I'm looking at this graph is when it talks about a max and a min, okay, maxes are when I'm seeing kind of a kind of a hump in the road here, and minimums are when I'm looking for my valleys. So if there are any in my in my graphs, and there will be, I want to be able to fully see them. If I can't, I'm gonna to have to mess with things, but in this case I can. I can see I have a max, I can see I have a min, so that's cool. So, I don't have to mess with my window at all. But how do I get this graph to where it's accurate? So, that's a good question. What we're going to do is we're going to find some points to make it so it's accurate. So here's how this is going to work. When we're looking for an x-intercept, we're going to start trapping stuff. So to find an x-intercept, we're going to do second, trace, and we're going to be using number two. So second, trace. And I know it doesn't say x-intercept, it says zero, but x-intercepts and zeros are the same thing. So once I get here, this little cursor guy should be flashing somewhere in the middle of my screen. It may not be in the exact spot mine is, but that's okay. And what I'm going to attempt to do is, those spots that we were looking for yesterday on the x-axis, here, here, and here in this case, I want to know what those values are. So what I'm going to do, again, using my left and right arrows only, is I'm going to work my way over to the left here. And I'm going to try to get as close as I can to that where that zero is, where the x-axis is. Now, I may not be able to get directly on. Okay, That may be as close as I can get, and that's okay. So once I get there this down a little so we can get our steps back in here. Okay, so we did step one. We got as close as we can. So now step two. Left arrow. One, two, three. Don't worry if your cursor disappears. Four. And hit enter. And it's going to be very faint, but you may notice there's a little dotted line with an arrow that shows up. That's kind of my first border. I'm kind of trying to trap this point in. So once I get that first one, now I'm going to use my right arrow, one, two, three, four, that gets me back where I started, five, five, six, seven, eight, I hit enter one time, now you'll notice I have two of those little dotted lines, and my zero is in between, and I'm going to hit enter one more time, and my little cursor guy will go there. The x value is the actual intercept, which we're going to round to the nearest hundredth, negative 1.79. Now, you may not be able to see on my screen real well, but if you're doing it, you should be able to see it. You're like, what's this 2e negative 12? What's up with that? That actually is 0, because e to the negative 12 means it's 2 with 11 zeros in front of it, which that's pretty darn close to 0. 0.00000000. 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000. I think that's enough. 2. Okay. So you always see e to something that's just 0. So negative 1.790 is my first x intercept, my first 0. So sometimes we may get whole numbers with these, but a lot of times we're going to get funky values. So you're like, you're like, wait a minute, that's only the first one. 
there's two more. So I got to do this every single time. Yes. Okay. So we start the process over. You can't just arrow right away. You've literally got to do second trace. Number two. It starts the process over. And now I'm going to use my arrow. I'm going to start working my way over. Okay, get as close as I can to my next zero and do the process. So I get there. Then what? Don't hit enter yet. One, two, three, four. Hit enter. Okay, there's my first border. Trapping this in. Once I've done that, arrow right, eight. One, two, three, four. Back where I started. Five, six, seven, eight. And enter. Okay, my two little arrows should be trapping in my zero, which they are. And I hit enter one more time. And I get my next zero. And at least this time it told me y equals zero, which is a good thing. So I've got my second one. And there is a method to my madness, so stay with me. I got one zero left. Start the process. Second trace. Number two. Okay. And if your question is, oh my gosh, when we get to the test, am I going to have to remember all that? No, there, there's going to be help, so no worries. It's just you actually doing it. So one last time. So I'm arrowing over. Trying to get as close to that zero as I can. Ooh, that's pretty good right there. So I'm over here. Okay, get as close as you can. Yes. Arrow left. One, two, three, four. Hit enter. First border. Arrow right. One, two, three, four. Back where I started. Five, six, seven, eight. I don't care if it went off the screen. Hit enter. I notice my borders are trapping in the, the X value that I'm looking for, my intercept, and I hit enter one more time. 1.67, and there's that E thing again, which we know is just a fancy way of saying zero. Okay, so I found my three zeros. I found my three X intercepts. Now, I'm going to find my max and my min. Same type of process we're going to do here, except it's just a different button in my second trace here. So when I'm looking for a max, it's still second trace. Okay, Same menu that we were just in, except now when I'm looking for a maximum, I notice that's number four. So I go down to number four, because i got to tell the calculator what I'm looking for. So the maximum, again, is the top of a hill, the top of a mountain. So I work on getting my cursor to the top of the mountain. Well, as close to the top of the mountain as I can here. That looks pretty good. And now I do the same thing I was doing with my x-intercept. I'm still going to arrow left. One, two, three, four. Hit enter. And then one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, enter, enter. And so my maximum here, if I round the negative point nine 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 negative one, so negative one seven is my max. And so to find my min then, you'll never guess. Second trace. I mean, everything is under second trace that we need here. Except this time, it's going to be number three. And yes, it does matter. If you go looking for a maximum and you click on three minimum, it's going to give you an error message. So I have to make sure whichever one I'm looking for, that's the one I hit here. So I'm looking for a min. I'm looking for my valley. So I'm going to arrow till I get to the bottom of the valley. So once I'm down there, you know it. One, two, three, four. Enter. There's my first boundary. One, two, three, four. Back where I started. Five, six, seven, eight. My boundaries are now trapping my minimum. And I hit enter. One, negative, five. 
Okay. That's how, when I'm not directly given the zeros, how I want to get the most accurate graph possible. Because now what I can do is I can go to my graph and go, okay, negative 1.79, that's kind of close to negative 2 here. 0.11 is just past 0. 1.67 is just about to 2. And then I got a point at negative 1, 7, and 1, negative 5. And basically, all I'm going to do now is kind of look at my picture, use my points as a guide, and sketch my graph. Okay, so when we get to things with quizzes, tests, final exams, stuff like that, this is going to be the main thing that I'm kind of watching out for, that I'm kind of looking for, but at the same time, I don't want you to have to think you have to go to your calculator and make sure every single point is perfect. I'm looking for those main ones, but otherwise we're just going to do a sketch. And the ones we're doing here, I guess I'll call an extreme for lack of a better word, because a lot of times I'm going to give this to you with the zero sitting there already to make it a little bit easier for you. Just something to ponder. Okay. So let's do one more of these because I don't want to. I don't want to start throwing twists at you before we even have done the basics here a couple of times. And yes, the the graphing calculators on phones and stuff do this. If you're Android and you've been on my website and looked at Wabbit Emu is what it's called. Um, for Android, it works just like this calculator. If you do free graphing calc off of the iPhone, which is another one that I have because I don't have an Android, um, that one's actually easier. You can just poke on the screen, and it will literally tell you what the max and the min and the intercepts are. So kind of cool, kind of cool. All right. I might even jot those back up here when we get done. If somebody watches this in the future, they're going to go, ooh, what's that old app that he's talking about? Okay, so when I go to type this into y equals, attention, attention, critical moment. The fraction has to be in parentheses, or the calculator is going to think this x to the fourth is in your denominator. Okay, so negative one-fourth x to the fourth, again, we need to get that out of the exponent, so right arrow, plus 2x squared. Okay, typing in, always a good idea. So let's see. Let's see if we're in good shape to see this. Whoa, that's kind of funky. Hello, golden arches. Um, so on this one, I notice a few things. Okay, I notice I'm going to have 1, 2, 3x intercepts. I'm going to have two maximums this time because I have two tops of the mountain and I got one valley. So let, let's get to work. Second trace, we know where that is. Okay, x-intercept is a zero, so we're looking at zero. Now, normally I just work left to right. So get as close as I can. Again, left and right arrows only. One, two, three, four, enter. First bound, one, two, three, four, gets me back where I started, five, six, seven, eight, enter, and then one more. So negative 2.83, zero would be my first one. And again, once I do it, I got to reset the computer, reset the calculator's thinking. So second trace, zero. So my like texting and stuff experts, you should be able to do this like at record speed. Now, here's something I want you to notice. Well, we'll just do it the process, and then I'll talk about it. So left bound, one, two, three, four, enter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, enter. And one more. Okay, why is my calculator gone back batty? Okay, 
So now you get here and you're like, wait, error, no sign change. Well, we did everything right. I see that it's there. What's, what's going on? Okay, let me show you something else. When you get one of those, okay, I go back and pull my graph back up. If you get one of those, I want you to stop the normal process for a minute and look at your table. Second graph. Because we were talking about before when we were looking for zeros, what did I look for? Zero in the Y. If you go to the table and you see a zero in the Y, that's an x-intercept. That's a zero. And for some reason, the calculator, when it sees bounces like that, doesn't want to count those. So I may have to pull the chart up too. Like, dang, why do you keep pulling up all these different things? So once I have that, so I have the first two now. I got that one from the table. I finally get to my last one here. So I get in there. One, two, three, four. Enter. One, two, three, four to get me back where I started. Five, six, seven, eight. And we've got 2.830. Okay. So the table, I can always look at the table at the start if I wanted to to see if I get some freebies. But if I don't, I got to do my process. So now I'm going to do my maxes and mins. So uh, we'll do max first since it's here. Now there's two of them this time. And holding down the arrows can get you going at like hyper speed here. So left and right arrows to get to the top of the hill. One, two, three, four. Enter. One, two, three, four. Top of the hill. Five, six, seven, eight. My max looks like it's negative 2, 4 for that one. But I see another one. Second trace. Let's go get the other one. Top of the hill. 1, 2, 3, 4. Enter. First boundary. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8. Enter. Enter. Got to do two enters on that last one. Two, four. Is it coincidence that they're being kind of like reflections of each other? Yes. So don't think every time if I get one that's a negative, it means the same positive is coming up. Okay. Kind of coincidental here. So my last one is my min. You're like, wait a minute. Hardy, my min looks like it's down where my intercept was. I'm pretty sure it is, but for the time that it takes, I'd still check. So I'd still do my four to the left, three, four, one, two, three, four. Remember, E equals zero to us. So even though this looks like it's like negative 1.37, 3.79, no, you see E, E is zero, and I see E's in both of them. So zero, zero is going to be my min. So I go ahead and I plot to the best of my ability all of these points. And then I just use the picture on my calculator, if I can get the glare off here, as my guide. And I get my my value out of there. Okay. So that's basically what we're doing when we're asked to graph one of these. Punch it in the calculator, find your intercepts, find your max and min, and use those points to graph. And that's that's a pretty accurate drawing when you're doing those. So once I've done that a little bit, I think I've got one here on the back that I wanted to take a peek at. Yes. Yes, there is one on the back I want to take a peek at. So as we get to the back, okay, I'm actually going to have us do number five because we're going to kind of see the same idea working here. And I want to be able to talk about multiplicity like we did yesterday. Okay, we're going to have bounces on some of these. Well, when am I going to have a bounce? If I see a squared, I'm going to have a bounce. Because remember what this means, and I'm just going to jot it down up here for reference. 
It means I'm going to have 2x minus 3s. That's what my squared means here. And I'm going to have 2x plus 1s, but they just didn't write it out that way. They wanted to write it out in a little simpler of a format. Now, here's the nice thing. With our knowledge, I should be able to figure out the zeros, the x-intercepts, without doing it in the calculator. Because remember, we talked before about when these are in this form, I can just take what's in the parentheses, set it equal to zero, and find an intercept. And I can also do that with the, oops, with the x plus 1. So in this case, I have x-intercepts at negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. And I'll see this in a minute. We're still going to graph it. Now, do I know my mins and maxes right away? No. No, I don't. So, now that I've got that info, I saved myself some time, though. Parentheses. And you don't have to write it out like this. Doing it like it is here is fine. And again, you can use the x squared button that's along the left to get your squared if you don't want to use the caret, the little up arrow. So once I get that typed in, I'm going to take a look at the picture. And where do I notice my x-intercepts are at? Negative 1 and 3. And they bounce. They don't go through. Or if I wasn't sure, I can look at my chart. Negative 1, 0. 3, 0. So there's lots of little ways that I can make this work easier for me. But I still need to find the max and min values. That, I'm still going to do the same thing. Second trace. Oh, uh, I wrote max first, so we'll do max. Okay, top of the hill. Once I'm at the, the mountaintop, one, two, three, four to the left. First boundary, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four to the right. Enter. One more time. Max is at one, eight. And now I've got my two mins to do. Same table. Second trace. Second trace. Keep going to that menu. Minimum. Down to the bottom of the valley we go. One, two, three, four. Enter. First boundary. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Enter to set the boundary and enter to get the answer. Negative 1. Remember, I see E. E is 0. And I do it one more time. Even though I'm kind of starting to look at this now and go, you know what? Hmm. My minimum was at the intercept. I wonder if that one is. If you're a risk taker, I, I would understand if you made the assumption that that was going to be your other minimum. It's 3, 0. But if we want to check quick... Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we were right. So I plot my points. I don't have a lot of them to work with, which is why having the calculator here is kind of helpful. Get my bounce, get my max, get my bounce. And we're good. So, what are we going to do now to kind of see how this works as far as the assignment goes? Because you notice when you came in, I had you pick up graph paper. So, what I want to do is I want to go ahead... 
and do a couple with you, because that way when we get the picture later, we can get those situated. Also, for those of you looking later, you'll be able to see our problems here. So if you like to be able to look later and go, oh, yep, Hardy's got these up here. He's got everything up there except the last two. This is nice. So basically what we're going to be doing is find the zeros, graph the function. Okay, so we're going to look at number 14 here in a second. And that's basically write a polynomial. We did this yesterday. This is review. Get them into the parentheses, multiply it out. Okay, I'll even set one of those up for you. And then the last one's just asking you to find the min and the max. So I'm actually going to put that up here a little bit further for a minute. So if people are looking later, they're going to be able to at least hit pause and get the problems off because it's 36 and 38, where we're going to use a calculator to find the max and the min. So for the time being, okay, I'm going to get number 14 up here, which is y equals x minus 2x plus 9. I can put it in the calculator that way. I don't have to multiply it out to do this. So, x minus 2, x plus 9. Well, let's take a look at the graph here. You're like, uh-oh. Hardy? I can see the zeros. There's a min down here somewhere. How am I going to find it when I can't see it? Good question. So first I'm going to write down my x-intercepts which again, I know are going to be at 2 and negative 9. You're like, how do you know that? Well, first I know when there's parentheses, I just take the opposite signs. If I was to look at my chart, 2 and negative 9, that's where the y's are 0. But now, this whole max and min thing, how am I going to make this where I can see it? So I look between where my intercepts are, and I notice the numbers are getting more negative than the negative 10 that I'm used to. Like, I see negative 30 it gets all the way up to. So here's what I may have to do sometimes. I may have to hit window, and since my minimum goes all the way down to negative 30, I'm going to go a little further than that. Let's say, let's say I go to negative 40, okay? You may have to mess with this a little bit. I know some of you just mess with it, play with it. Now I can see my minimum. I notice, though, there, there's a valley, but there's no hill. So I don't have a max. But I still can use second calc and min to find the value of my valley. It works the same way. Get down as close as you can to the bottom of the valley. <coughs> Two, three, four. Enter. There's my first border. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. And my min is at negative three and a half. Negative 30.25. Hello. So you're like, how in the daylights am I going to graph that? Because I do. I want you to find the information, but I do want you to make a sketch. So here would be my suggestion. Okay, We're allowed to scale points if we want to. So maybe you're like, okay, so I can still do Okay, my x's I can still fit in because I go to 2 and to negative 9. Okay, that, that's fine. But I, I can't go down 30. I don't have that much room. If I want to scale my y-axis differently, so let's say, let's say I decide I'm going to count by fives on the y-axis instead. If you are, label them so I know what you're doing. And so what I would be able to do now is I'd say, oh, so negative 3 and a half, and a little over negative 30, This looks like a parabola. And I've got my values. Okay. So really all we're going to be doing with these is just that. Okay. 
punch them in the calculator. I may have to make an adjustment a little. But remember, on any problem, if you make an adjustment to the window, and you will have to on a couple, go back to the window at the end of your problem and set it back to normalcy, not only for you, but for the next person that looks at it. So let's see here. That's what the first group of problems is. And then the last one I want to do, I want to do one of those last two. So we're going to do, which one looks worse? Ooh, 36 looks cray cray. Let's do 36. Okay. And it's okay when you're doing an assignment to get a little different of a order to things. Okay, here we're not looking for graphs. We're looking for maxes and mins. So we're going to let the calculator do our work as far as this goes. So let's see if this is going to fit or if we're going to have to make an adjustment. Negative x to the third plus 16x squared minus 76x woo, plus 96. Why do I have a feeling this is not going to fit on the screen? So negative x to the third plus 16x squared minus 76x plus 96. Go. Oh. Well, I see part of it. So let's see. It looks like it's going off the screen to the right, so we're going to have to extend x. Let's see how low y goes. Okay, there's my 0. Ooh. Negative 20. Whoa, negative 64. Okay. So maybe, maybe, I don't know, x max. Let's stretch it out to the right because I couldn't see the whole graph to the right. And then it went down quite a ways. Um, well, let's start with 100. Let's see what happens. And we might have to play with this a little bit. So let's see. Do I get everything now? Here it comes. There it goes. Okay. There's my min. There's my max. I can see things now. So let's do our max. Top of the mountain. Three, four, enter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got a max at seven point one zero because it had round up. And five point zero five. And then I see I got one valley, one min. Same idea. Get to the bottom of the valley. One, two, three, four. Enter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And my min's at 3.57, negative 16.90. Okay. And again, we're going to have some time, because like we always do on a second day, we spend more time playing and less time me kind of showing and talking. So if you do have capability of getting to an app, I would with this, because again, the calculators need to stay in here. Do not do the funny, oh, I borrowed it. No, I have classes 35. We, we cannot be borrowing things. If you're looking for an app, and it's on the front of my website, but just to kind of let you know as well, my phone people, on Android at the Play Store, there's this wonderful little program called Wabbit Emu that literally gets you this on your phone. So all the same button presses, all the same everything. It's awesome. Okay. Apple, the one I use is literally called Free Graphing Calculator. It does not have the exact same button presses as this, but the cool thing is, once you get the graph up, you can just literally take your finger and point on the intercept. It'll tell you the intercept. You put your finger and point at the min or max, you can get that. But don't get used to doing that only. When you're in class, use the calculator because we get to quizzes and tests. You're not using your phone apps. Okay? Making that clear. So use the time when you are here to use the calculator. Get used to those button presses. But you can play with that a little on your own, too, and we'll get to play with more of it tomorrow in class.